So back when I made my original review for the ROG Ally, the biggest complaint that I had about this thing was the fact that it ran Windows. And it's not because I hate Windows. I mean, I'm not a big fan of it, but this seven inch touchscreen with game control strapped to the side is not a good Windows experience. And Asus did their best to help by giving you the Armory Crate, which lets you navigate things a little more easily with these controllers, but you're still stuck with some of the Windows things that eventually drove me nuts. And one of them was the straw that broke the camel's back. One of the annoying Windows things that wasn't the one that drove me over the edge but was still irritating was anytime there was a big Windows update, it would remind you to install Office 365 on your gaming handheld, which I would never do, but the only option was to remind you again in three days and then an update would come through and again, you'd be reminded. But the one that drove me over the edge, the straw that broke the camel's back, was the swipe in from the left news page. That, that was it for me. Because, like, think about it for a minute. You're playing a video game because you want escapism. You want to get away from whatever's going on in the world and just get lost in a video game. And then your thumb slips off the D-pad or you're playing a touch-based game and you swipe in from the left and suddenly all the things that you're trying to just get away from in your video game are right there in a nice little organized panel courtesy of Windows 11. That was it for me. I, I want to play a video game and I don't want to be reminded of what I'm trying to avoid while playing a video game. So... I actually put this down for quite a while and considered alternatives. And then I found one. And that alternative was not the device, but the OS. It was Bazite. Now for anybody who doesn't know what Bazite is, Bazite is a version of Linux that's basically SteamOS, but not SteamOS because that's exclusive to Valve right now with the Steam Deck, though they are apparently going to be bringing it to other devices. But if you want a SteamOS experience, but obviously don't have a Steam Deck, this is where you want to go. But if you've been on this channel for a while, you know I tried Linux before and it, it really didn't end out too well. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, I tried to use Linux as a video editing operating system and just sort of a daily driver operating system. And I went down a massive rabbit hole of elitist users, uh, verbal abuse, you name it. Wasn't a great experience. And I came to the conclusion that while you have the memes of the year of the Linux desktop, the year of the Linux desktop won't happen until the end-to-end -end user experience is made more user-friendly or just in general made widely acceptable to the average consumer and not just tinkerers and IT departments for data centers. It has to be made user-friendly end-to-end. I mean, this is why for better or for worse, Windows is the number one operating system in the world because it is on everything when you buy it. If you want something other than Windows, then you're buying a Mac and that already has Mac OS installed. You only have to go through the setup. You don't have to go through partitioning, installing, adding functions like driver support or full on codec support, which is what ended up getting me stuck when I tried Linux. It's just all there. I mean, to be fair, some of the more user-friendly versions of Linux like Mint or Ubuntu do have a pretty easy setup. And I will say, if you're going to do this, I still recommend having some sort of dock accessory or at least a splitter with a keyboard and mouse because you are going to need to potentially type a few things if you want to set up login profiles. For me, I just used a little dock and I plugged in the USB installer and I plugged in the mouse and keyboard and that was it. I got it installed. I logged into Steam and we were off to the races. Once I got onto the main interface, something really cool that I wasn't expecting, though thinking about it, it kind of makes sense because you have to pick your hardware to download Bazite, is the fact that it has the buttons that are specifically for the ROG Ally already mapped for you. For example, the quick settings button under the Armory Crate now functions as your Steam button, and your Armory Crate button now functions as the Steam quick settings button that lets you pull up the frame rate counter or adjust your refresh rate, all that stuff. And actually, Bazite even made the rear buttons of this thing useful, because under Windows, they're functionally useless, which is why I 3D printed these little flat plates for them. But under Bazite, you press the left side to bring up the keyboard, and you press the right side to change the chip TDP, as well as to adjust your RGB functionality. It's actually really cool and I'm not going to change the flat plates because I like not having those weird things hanging out in the place of where my hand goes but at least I use these buttons more than I ever did under Windows. Oh and actually while we're on the topic of useless or at least useless to me the XGM port is still useless under Linux. I didn't see anybody saying that the eGPU function worked but I'm never going to spend more than the device is worth to buy an eGPU for this thing so I actually just 3D printed a cover that gives me access to the useful USB-C port 
but keeps the XGM fort from collecting dust. But once I got into Bazite and I was just navigating around the interface, this thing suddenly felt more like a gaming handheld than it ever did under Windows. It was incredible. And like there is a desktop environment that you can use with Bazite, but I only ever used it to initially set up things like emulators. But if you're a general user and you're just logging into Steam and downloading your games, you never even have to touch the desktop environment. I think for most people, if this becomes an option for these devices where it's just the Steam OS interface, I think that's what a lot of end users are gonna be looking for. Sort of like how a lot of end users are probably looking for better deals on their smartphone plans and they can find it thanks to today's video partner, Mint Mobile. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I've been using Mint Mobile since 2023 as the main carrier for my business phone here on my YouTube channel. It's been running in my Google Pixel 6 Pro for a very long time now and I have had no issues with it, probably because they have the nation's largest 5G network. And because it is a 5G network, it is fast. And you can get that same premium wireless experience you might have been shopping for somewhere else for as low as $15 a month. But if you want more, there are tons of different options. And once you find the plan that's best for you, you can either download an eSIM for your phone, or if you need a physical SIM card, Mint can send you one of those as well. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and check out the link trymintmobile.com slash Garrett Crespo to get 50% off their 12 month unlimited plan. That is a huge deal. It's running for a limited time. Huge thanks to Mint Mobile for partnering with me for this video. Now let's go ahead and get back to Bazite. Like I said a minute ago, I think this is pretty much what most users would end up sticking to instead of the desktop interface for Linux if they got this as an option for their gaming handheld. And it's kind of niche, but that's the thing. That end-to-end -end user friendliness that I mentioned earlier is right here. This is end-to-end -end user friendliness. If you want to be experimental and dive into the desktop, play with the terminal, add a bunch of things, remove a bunch of stuff, or even distro hop, once you're familiar with Linux, you have the option to do that with this. But for the average user, that end-to-end -end user friendliness that will bring about the year of the Linux desktop, that's right here. This is what, in my opinion, Linux desperately needed. But with all that being said, that's just the user interface. So what is this thing like to game on? Well, first off, I'm just gonna say the bad thing right up front. You do not have any Windows exclusives. And when I say Windows exclusives, I mean things like DirectX 12 support or the big one, potentially for some people, Xbox Game Pass, because that is specific to the Xbox app that is only on Windows. For me, I really didn't care because you can still get Microsoft published games through Steam like Forza or Halo, but if you're the kind of person who really, really uses any of the game functionality that comes with Xbox Game Pass on your ROG Ally, you're probably either gonna wanna stick with Windows or potentially dual boot. And the good thing with that is if you're not familiar with how to dual boot Bazite in Windows, you actually have a guide right on Bazite's website that walks you through it. No forums required. Thank God. So again, just to reiterate, Xbox Game Pass is a Windows exclusive, so you kind of have to stick with Windows or at least dual boot into it for any Xbox Game Pass games. But for everything else, you can just download it and play it through Steam right here on Bazite. Which speaking of downloads, let's talk about that for a minute. When you download a game on Bazite, you're gonna see a few other things download, including something called Proton. Proton is a translation layer that takes games compiled to play through Windows and allows them to play within Linux. To the average user, it's probably gonna be hard to explain what a translation layer is because it's not something they really ever think about. They just think that they download the game and it plays. And to Bazite's credit, they do a really good job of making it just seem like that. You download a game, there's a couple other things that come along with it, and then you play the game. That is, again, another fantastic end-to-end -end user experience thing that's just oh, chef's kiss. And really, I shouldn't be surprised by the translation layer's simplicity because Apple did the same thing when they moved from Intel to their own Apple Silicon platform, and Rosetta 2 was seamless. And to Bazite's credit, or at least in this case, Valve's credit with their work on Proton, Proton is also seamless. Now, in terms of games you can play, now that I've told you that they have to run through a translation layer, there are tons of games that just play. I mean, most of my library just straight up worked. Even really old games just handled it, no problem. And really, Steam makes it super easy to tell what games work, kind of work, and don't work. These icons make it super clear. And again, that's just another piece of the end user simplicity puzzle. 
Now, when it comes to the performance of the games, what you got under Windows on the ROG Ally is pretty much exactly what you get under Bazite with the exact same hardware, with a few notable exceptions, one of them being Red Dead Redemption 2 of all games. I don't know if it's because the Fedora core that Bazite is built on is much more lightweight than Windows, but when I was playing Red Dead Redemption 2 under Windows, I was getting an average of 30, maybe 40 FPS with this thing set to the highest TDP that the chip could go. But under Bazite, I was running at 40 to 60 FPS with the same power profile. I don't know what caused that, and there were a few other games that did perform slightly better under Bazite than Windows, but don't take that as the norm. I feel like that's more the exception and not the rule. But regardless, the performance on this thing is exceptional because you are getting basically the same performance you got under Windows, even with it having to be done with a translation layer. And I'm guessing part of that is because it does some pre-shader compilations, but I'm, again, focusing on the average user, not the techie user who knows what pre-shader compilation means and all that kind of stuff. But either way, you're not losing performance. If anything, certain games are gaining them, but exception, not rule. Exceptional performance. But unfortunately, one of the improvements you won't see is the battery life. If you're playing Red Dead Redemption 2 with 25 or 30 watts enabled, it's gonna eat through the battery like it's at a buffet. And if you're playing indie games or simpler titles like FTL, it's gonna sip battery like there's about to be a drought. So that really didn't change. And considering the power hungry nature of this hardware at full chat, you really can't expect much out of this poor battery. Though I am intending to get a battery mod that will expand the battery without actually ruining the feel of this in the hand. So I don't know, drop a like and maybe subscribe if you wanna see that. But Regardless, the battery is still exactly what it was under Windows. Although when it comes to the battery, or more so the power on and power off function of this device, when you're running Bazite and you just press the power button, it goes into a sleep mode, whether you're in-game or not. You can put it down for a couple hours or a day or even longer, and when you come and pick it back up and press the button, it just powers right back on exactly where you left off. Like, Windows sleep mode, wouldn't even let you dream of doing that. But this thing lets you just pause mid-game, power it off, and walk away. That makes it feel even more like a game console and less like a Windows PC. And like for me, that's kind of the thing. Installing Bazite on this has made my ROG Ally feel more like a portable gaming console and less like a gaming laptop that didn't come with a mouse or keyboard. It's just an incredible, and user experience. In my opinion, if you aren't completely reliant on something like Xbox Game Pass or any other Windows exclusives, I personally feel like Bazite is worth installing as the only OS on this device. And if you do need Windows, like I said, you can dual boot. For me personally, I am fully on board with Bazite as my main OS for the ROG Ally, and I am super happy with my second stab at Linux, at least in terms of using it on a gaming handheld. We'll see how things go on the desktop side of things. I kind of feel like Bazite, and of course SteamOS on the Steam Deck, is a massive step towards getting the desktop Linux environment into the hands of normies without them having to trudge through the forums or RTFM or hide away from Linux elite neckbeards who have more hours in Linux than they do in a shower. Uh, sorry, my previous Linux experience PTSD flared up for a second. In all seriousness though, I am super happy to finally be using Linux in a way that I enjoy without feeling pressured or looked down on. I am super happy with this and I cannot wait to see where things go from here. But either way, that's been it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Leave some comments down below. Do you have a gaming handheld? Do you like Linux or Windows? Do you like Windows on a handheld? If so, why? All those things, leave some comments down below. And again, on your way down there, check out the link in the description for our partner Mint Mobile at trymintmobile.com slash Garrett Crespo. Huge thanks to them for partnering at this video. And of course, like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. But until then, thank you all so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Make sure to be there and have a good one.